<laughs> Hi, I'm Miriam Joy and welcome to my studio. Today we're going to be working on our jack-o'-lantern goblet. And this is a real fun project and you can use it to serve little candies in or put a little flameless candle in. Don't put a real candle in it. And just whatever you want to use it for. There's all kinds of ways you could decorate it with for the Halloween holiday. So we're going to start with our little vase and a little candle holder. And you guys probably know this by now if you watch my videos. I picked them up at the Dollar Tree. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to spray our glass with alcohol. Anytime you're doing the alcohol inks or dyeing them like this, first thing you want to do is clean it with alcohol. And if you notice, I keep my alcohol in a spray bottle so that I don't have to open it up and pour it into something else. I can just easily apply it. And also, if you've ever used the alcohol on the dyes and stuff, it kind of makes it spotted and makes a real neat effect. So we're going to be using the Adirac um, alcohol inks and I love the alcohol inks. You see me use them in tons of my videos. And if we if you don't can't find them in your stamp booking section, a lot of times they'll come in a three pack, but if you can't find the colors you want there, bluewellarts.com sells them as well as Giraffe Laugh, uh, Bob and Sherry, and we'll put that information up at the end of the video for you as well. And I'm going to be using orange. And this time I am going to pour it out into a container and put it onto, excuse me, that's not what I'm doing. <laughs> Sometimes I'm doing a couple of videos here and I can't remember what I'm doing. On this one, I'm going to put it directly onto my uh, cotton round and smear it on first. And it kind of just gives us an all over color. You could also put it on with your brush, but it's going to get a little bit more streaky. And then we want to put the lines on it by just dripping down. And I'm going to use my brush when I do the base just to apply it. But it does give a little bit more streakier, but it gives you a brighter color. So, okay, so we've got it all kind of coated, which is what we want. And then we're just going to take our orange and we're going to drip it down from under that top rim and I'm just going to let it drip and this will give us the brightness that we want and then I'm also going to come back in with the yellow as well and if you find the three pack they're perfect for the Halloween colors because it has the purple, the orange, and the yellow, and that's exactly what we're going to be using this time. And you just keep on doing it till you get it where you want it. And I'm using a tray just so if it drips, I have a place for it to drip onto. I'm going to go back and do one more thing of just the orange. So we have more orange than we have yellow, but the yellow really helps pop the color, I think, as well. And the alcohol inks are ones that just bleed out, and they're really great because you just get these wonderful, wonderful lines. And to me, this kind of gives it a candy corn type look or effect. So I'm going to stop there because we played with that enough. And you can play with it as little or as much as you want to. Now I'm going to set that aside and while that's drying we're going to move over to our base. And this time I will put my color, if I can open it, into my container and put it straight on so I do get a more vibrant color. And this is the purple that comes in the three pack. And I'm just going to brush this straight on. Now, 
don't use regular paint because you want to see through it. I mean, you could if you wanted to, but another option that you could do if you couldn't find the alcohol inks is the, um, the color with the Mod Podge. You could add some color into your Mod Podge and put them on that way as well and do that. I just like the convenience of the alcohol inks and I just put it right on and I'm done. The One of the other things that we normally do when we're working with inks that we do not do when we're applying it to glass is you do not varnish over it. It doesn't end up working real well. So there's nothing really for it to adhere to on the glass. It's just kind of sitting on top. So we're going to get this all colored in. And a lot of times what I'll do is I'll come back in the top and I'll color that just a little bit more just to get a darker color and sometimes I'll do that underneath the stand as well and that you, so you're doubling up your color so you get a darker color So while that guy is drying, we're going to come over and we're going to just heat set our guy a little bit. This is to help dry him and it's also to help keep the ink in place just a little bit better. So we want to make sure he's nice and dry before we start working with him. Here at home, you have time to let it dry. Just let it dry naturally. That's fine. Okay, give that a minute to cool here. And another color that they came out with is uh, the black. Um, and I really do like that. kind of gives it a spooky looking feel too, which is lots of fun as well. So I'm going to get rid of our tray here. Set that aside. That's just a cookie tree tray that I find at the dollar store. It's just a, especially when you're working with guys, help keep everything nice and clean and, and, um, just keep your workspace from getting all dyed and everything. So I'm going to go ahead and put a face on this and I'm going to do kind of a goofier face, not your typical pumpkin on this one. And if you wanted to do your, you know, your typical pumpkin, you can do your typical pumpkin. That's okay. Just do whatever you feel like. And I'm just going to use a regular permanent marker and you can gotta quit shaking a little bit here. You can use paint, acrylic paint, if you wanted to. But with this, you just put it on real quick and easy, and it's not a big deal. Let's see if I can get these outside lines a little bit straighter here. Guess it's time to go eat some lunch. I'm going to put a dot in the middle of that, and I'm going to give it a little bit of space here, and we're going to try and make them equal on the other side. And you can always go and look at jack o' lantern faces or things like that to get ideas of what kind of face you would like to put on your candle. And think of different things like ghost or a um, monster or different things like that or a witch you could do a witch you could do it with green skin or whatever you wanted to do so I'm gonna do some eyebrows and I like eyebrows eyebrows show in a type of an emotion also make it a little bit more goofy and I'm gonna give some lines here to show movement or a little bit more of what type of emotion we're looking at here. I'm going to try 
try and keep these equal in size. And we're gonna come down and we're gonna do a nose. And add a little bit of movement there. And then we're gonna kind of give him a kind of wumpy smile here. We're gonna go from a big, from a small thin line to a big side over here. Just to do something different so it's not your typical And I found when I'm working with the permanent markers, there's always one direction that goes better or more solid than the others. And like I said, don't be afraid to try the acrylic paint as well. Let's see if I can leave a little bit of a highlight in there. Get more of a sharp point over here. So I'm going to come up here and I'm going to give him a little bit of a line there and another little line there to kind of make him smile. Another thing you could do is kind of make like a lightning kind of bolt coming down or you could make stitches or any of those kind of fun things. So don't think we have to do just you know certain things we can always do other fun things as well Try and cover in here sometimes when you're covering up you end up taking more color off than you put on so be a little bit careful with that okay so we've got our basic little guy there I'm going to show you a Frankenstein I did I didn't care for the Frankenstein as much what I would do next time on the Frankenstein is do a taller um, more up and down instead of round and fat. That's the shape that he would need. So this would look really cute if we did him on this. And again, this was just the green on the um, alcohol inks on the vase. But I think he'd look cute as that. But you could do the ghost, you could do the witch, you could do a scarecrow and start thinking about different things like that. So we're going to put it onto our uh, little stand. And when you do a stand, it I think it just makes it a nicer piece. It just gives it the height instead of just a short little flat guy. It gives it a height and makes it just a little bit more elegant. So we're gonna glue him on with E6000. And I would probably let, I'm going to do these next, glue his hands on as well. And I'd probably do one, this part first, and then come back in and glue his hands on so you don't mess it up. But we want to show you all of that, so we're going to be gluing it on. And I'm using the glue that I love to glue glass and glass to, and that's our E6000. To glue hard stuff to hard stuff, that's the way to do it. So I'm going to put that all around up the top. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of see where I want him to line up. And you can see through this top so you can kind of get him more lined up there. Push down on that for a couple of seconds. And then we've got that. And then I love these little hands. And if you work with gourds or ornaments, they're really, really great too. They're little skeleton hands. And I used to find them at the Dollar Tree, but I haven't found them in the last two years. And I found these at Michael's this year in a little bag. They were, I believe, $2.99, and I think there's probably a dozen in here. So these are real fun little skeleton hands, and they just really animate our piece even more. So what we're going to do is we're going to glue these guys now. And it, they don't fit all the way up, so you may want to see where it kind of fits and just glue that part, not the glue the fingers up on top. And I'm going to take a piece of blue painter's tape and once I decide where this is going to go, we're going to hold it in place while it, 
while the glue dries. Now we don't want this any lower than the flat bottom part of our little bowl. And I'm not going to tack, put that on too much, just enough so it doesn't slip and slide, so it doesn't pick anything else up. And then we're going to do it on this other side. I'm just going to go ahead and put my tape on him. And then once I position him, just go ahead and do that. You want them about the same distance, so you can also look from the top as well. To see if they're about the same area on both sides. And I'm going to look. I think I've got this guy just a tad bit lower. I said I would normally let this dry before I messed with it, the base dry before I messed with my hands. So okay, that's a little bit better. I'm gonna line that back up because I've moved that around just a little bit. And then once your little guy is dry, you're simply going to take the tape off and you've got him ready to use or however you want to decorate for your Halloween party or just for the holiday. So if you have any questions, please email me at art at miriamjoy.com. We've got a bunch of Halloween videos going on. So come on over to miriamjoy.com on our um, web page, and you'll see a YouTube link to find more of these great YouTube videos. Thank you, and God bless.